show your support. Like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am that British guy and welcome to my predictions for the WrestleMania 34 match card. Now we've still got Elimination Chamber and Fastlane to come, but I thought it would be a bit of fun to basically see if we can work out where WWE are going with their booking and see if I can book the entire show for WrestleMania. So let's get started. First up, I'm going to start off obviously with the pre-show and I'm going to have three matches on the pre-show as is tradition. Firstly, we are going to start off with a match for the Intercontinental title between The Miz and Finn Balor. Now these two will be facing each other in the Elimination Chamber and chances are they will be involved in some way to do with their own or each other's eliminations. Potentially with The Miz eliminating Finn Balor and then him wanting retribution and it leading to a title match. Obviously you've got the potential six versus six matchups as well on Raw if you get the Miztourage and the club involved as well. Next up we have the United States title match and now obviously I appreciate this will be defended on Fastlane but I am predicting that we will see a sort of a multi-man match with Bobby Roode defending against Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton with potential other people in there such as Dolph Ziggler and Baron Corbin possibly even Mojo Rawley he hasn't been on TV for a while or even Ty Dillinger but I definitely think it will revolve around Bobby Roode, Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton and finally again as is tradition quite an easy one to book this the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal will basically be the main event, if you like, of the pre-show, which will just give WWE an opportunity to basically put the mid-carders in that aren't in any particular feuds or that they just haven't got any time or room for, maybe with a couple of NXT call-ups, depending on what happens at TakeOver the night before if they're not in any particularly high-profile spots. So moving on to the main show and we're going to kick things off with the Raw Women's Championship match and my prediction for this is that Asuka will stay on Raw contrary to some of the rumours that have been going around and she will be challenging Alexa Bliss for the title. Alexa Bliss obviously will be defending that title at Elimination Chamber and what better way of making her look as strong as is physically possible by seeing off five competitors in the first ever women's elimination chamber making her as strong a champion as possible for Asuka to inevitably dethrone. I really can't see Asuka losing her streak until she actually loses the title. Next up we have the cruiserweight championship match. Now obviously on 205 Live there is a tournament underway at the moment and the final of that tournament will crown a new champion at Wrestlemania and as the title is vacant and as this is a cruiserweight match why not hang the belt up so that they have to climb a ladder to retrieve it. That way Drake Maverick can walk the title belt out, bit of pomp and circumstance hook it round the ring and we can all watch it get suspended up in the air and coming down to the ring to fight for it will be Cedric Alexander and Drew Gulak and personally I hope it is those two and I hope Drew Gulak wins it because I think he deserves a run at the top of 205 Live as the Cruiserweight Champion. Now WWE will probably end up putting the Cruiserweight title match on the pre-show but if they're really wanting to elevate 205 Live and really wanting to kind of wipe the slate clean with the Cruiserweight division and give it a bit of a shot in the arm 
they need to put this match, whatever it is, with whatever the two opponents end up being, they need to put this on the main card of WrestleMania, and I really, really hope they do. Otherwise, this whole renewal that they've been doing since the beginning of the year, it will be a complete waste of time. Next up, we have one of the featured matches, and that will be between Seth Rollins and Kurt Angle. And in Kurt Angle's corner will be Jason Jordan. Now, obviously, Seth is in the Elimination Chamber, I don't see him winning and obviously this gives him some fuel to start not necessarily whinging to Kurt Angle but making a point that really he deserved to win that. Maybe he gets down to the final two or maybe he gets sort of jumped from behind and ganged up on because obviously it's a multi-man match and this starts a bit of bickering between him and Kurt. It's perfectly plausible for Jason Jordan to come back in the next few weeks, obviously in a non-wrestling capacity, and kind of stoke the fires of, of the feud there. Obviously, Rollins has a legitimate grievance with Jason Jordan for costing him and Roman Reigns the titles in his last ever opportunity to win the tag titles against the bar a few weeks ago and the three of them have been playing up this kind of argument for a little while now obviously with Jason Jordan being the entitled child of Kurt Angle so it's very possible that he talks Kurt Angle into a match with Seth Rollins to kind of stand up for himself so I think that's going to be one of our Featured matches, obviously it will be Kurt's big WrestleMania return. I know he returned at the end of last year, but this will far and away eclipse his involvement so far. Especially against somebody as big as Seth Rollins. One of our other featured matches will involve John Cena. And I predict that he will go up against Elias. Now, I know there is a lot of talk that his last promo about WrestleMania bringing legends back from the dead, it kind of foreshadowed potentially an Undertaker return, but we have kind of been hearing the whole John Cena Undertaker thing for a few years now, and it's culminated to nothing. I do honestly think that they will leave The Undertaker retired. He laid down for Roman Reigns and he laid down for Brock Lesnar. He doesn't need to lay down for John Cena. And being the traditionalist that he is, I don't think he will come back and win his final match. Plus, we can use John Cena here to elevate Elias a bit more giving him a huge marquee match at WrestleMania. Ideally, Elias should win this, but this is John Cena at WrestleMania, so he probably won't, because let's be honest, The Miz was meant to beat John Cena at WrestleMania 33, and he didn't. But it will still give Elias a big moment, and those two haven't really seen the culmination of their feud yet. Again, they are both in the Elimination Chamber, and things can progress in that match. Right, few more title matches now. First up, the SmackDown Tag Team titles. The Usos defending against the Bludgeon Brothers. Now, the Bludgeon Brothers have obviously been on the fringes for a little while, just sort of beating up Jobbers and the Ascension and Breezango. Hopefully, after Fastlane, they will get chances against the likes of The New Day and Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin, just to kind of elevate them up to legitimate number one contenders. Perhaps even in a triple threat tag team match with both of those teams. And ideally if they completely annihilate both teams and easily win after quite a competitive match. That will be brilliant. Sets them up as very, very strong challengers. The Usos presumably will be defending their titles at Fast Lane. I know the New Day recently won a number one contenders match, but the match still hasn't actually officially been announced yet as of recording. But presumably they will win that and take the titles into WrestleMania. And hopefully, 
at long last actually feature on the main card rather than on a pre-show or not at all. They have done wonders for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. They could potentially drop them to the Bludgeon Brothers here and then come backlash, switch over to Raw and hopefully very quickly win the Raw Tag Team titles because I think they deserve that. Next up we have the SmackDown Women's title match between Charlotte Yes, she will be beating Ruby Riot at Fastlane. There's no way they're going to have Charlotte drop the title to Ruby Riot about a month before WrestleMania. It's just not going to happen. Charlotte will be going in against... Now, initially, I did think Ronda Rousey, but as soon as it was announced that she was going to be on Elimination Chamber signing her Raw contract, that obviously threw that plan out of the window... So, looking at the women's roster, there really isn't anyone that the crowd are really behind or really against either in terms of faces or heels, apart from Becky Lynch. And I think Becky Lynch deserves this kind of match. The women's title match the previous year was just throw all the women into one match together and it was a bit of a mess to be honest and it was really only there to get the title back on Naomi after she had to relinquish it due to her injury. So why not have Charlotte go up against Becky Lynch after Becky Lynch wins a number one contenders match and they can just have a good face versus face competitive match Ideally, what you can do is have Becky Lynch win this match, which I think will get a huge reaction from the crowd because they really, really want to see her do well. And then why not have the Carmella cash in and snatch it away from her as soon as she wins it? After such a huge pop from the crowd for Becky winning, it will be a brilliant way of Carmella getting some legitimate heat back on her and making her a lot more relevant again because she has disappeared into obscurity a bit. Now this next match was quite tricky purely because I wasn't entirely sure what to do with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. It's far too early to have them face each other in some kind of grudge match. Splitting the team up just seems ridiculous at this stage because they've only been together a short while and obviously they can't both go up against Shane McMahon. Shane McMahon will probably feature in their match at WrestleMania in some capacity. And it just seemed like a waste putting them both in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. So, I was thinking there's two of them. They need two opponents to face. Why not have Shane have meetings and arrange a deal with Paul Ellering to bring the Authors of Pain to Smackdown and have them debut as surprise opponents for Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. They need to come up to the main roster pretty sharpish anyway. Granted Raw are more in need of tag teams at the moment but with Backlash just around the corner after WrestleMania, it's a perfect opportunity to, as I said earlier, send someone like the Usos or the Bludgeon Brothers or potentially even Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin over to Raw. You could then reunite Chad Gable and Jason Jordan again, potentially, make them even a three-man team or split Shelton off himself so that he can have a singles run, potentially. So it doesn't really matter if the Authors of Pain show up and start competing for SmackDown. Hell, you could even move them straight over to Raw, come Backlash. Why not? But it gives Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn a legitimate team to face at WrestleMania. Next, we have the Dream Match, I think. And it would ideally be the main event, but we all know what the main event's actually going to be. So next up we have the WWE title match between AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura. We obviously already know that Nakamura is going to WrestleMania as he's won the Royal Rumble. And it's highly unlikely that WWE are going to ruin AJ versus Nakamura this close to WrestleMania. He's not going to be losing his title at Fastlane. It's just not going to happen. Especially when there are people like Dolph Ziggler or Baron Corbin that he can pin. 
and you can still protect Sammy and Kevin ahead of WrestleMania as well. Next up, we have the debut of Ronda Rousey, and she will be teaming up with Braun Strowman to face Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Now, obviously, Ronda will be appearing at Elimination Chamber to officially sign her Raw contract. Chances are Stephanie will be involved in some way and potentially try and overshadow her. Also, given what happened a few years ago at WrestleMania, there is a bit of history there. Also, if we rewind back to Survivor Series, the issues between Braun Strowman and Triple H still haven't been resolved. Why not? lump those two bits together it's the most sensible thing i know other people's names have been banded about kurt angle as one and seth rollins but to be honest those two seem like they're in a program with each other at the moment seth rollins against triple h again we saw it last year and the whole seth rollins against old members of the authority is just it's done to death so no there and Ronda will need a strong partner in order to hide how green she is likely to be in the ring. Granted, as a UFC competitor, she knows exactly what she's doing, but this is a completely different ball game. So, especially for an in-ring debut, as I predict it probably will be at WrestleMania, she needs protecting with somebody who is white hot at the moment, who the crowd will cheer no matter what, and why not give Braun a marquee match against Triple H and have him destroy Triple H as Ronda Rousey destroys Stephanie McMahon. It's the best thing for both of them. And finally, we have our main event, the main event that we know is going to be Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. Obviously, Roman Reigns is going to be winning the Elimination Chamber. We've known this for over a year now. This has been the match that Vince McMahon has been planning. Roman finally conquering the Beast and winning the title. What more is there to say, really? And because it's for the Universal title, and because it's Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar involved, this is definitely going to be the main event over AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura. Although it probably shouldn't be, it will be. So, there we have it. They are my predictions for the match card for WrestleMania 34. What do you think of how I have predicted the card? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Please let me know in the comments below. I shall be back very soon, but until then, I have been that British guy. Goodbye.